Hi again. Uh, in this video, we will talk about Data Center 1 and how it's connected to the lab. So as you see over here, uh, we have two switches, which is represent only uh, layer 2 connectivity to ISP1 and ISP2. And then we do have uh, two firewalls, which is as a firewall. One is active and one is standby. And there is a direct link between them for the uh, failover and for the sync of the data. Then <clears throat> in each firewall, we do have a couple of uh, interfaces. And we have the public IP address, which is the 4040.1. As you see over here, the, the data center BGP is 400. And the internal range, which is 1040.0.0.16. And the public range, which is uh, 4040.0.24. Uh, slash 24, sorry. <clears throat> then we do have a connectivity between the ASA and the core switches. And the core switches goes to the layer two switches for that company or that PRF. So this is switch belong to uh, files DNA, as you see over here. And this is switch belong to uh, VRF uh, borderless security. And these two um, uh, Docker and uh, Windows server uh, Active Directory represent over here are belong to the uh, files DNA. Uh, Active Directory is connected to VLAN 20, and uh, Docker 61 is connected to VLAN 10. Both goes to the VRF uh, on the core switch for uh, fast DNA, and then it goes to the ASA firewall on, on these uh, uh, sub-interfaces. Uh, yeah, not sub-interfaces really, they are uh, real interfaces over here. So as you see, 0, 05 and 0, uh, 04, which represent uh, one for files DNA and one for um, borderless security. And then on the firewall itself, which is he's using a one a public range for the internet. So let's uh, check out uh, one by one the components. Let's go for uh, switch 7.9. <laughs> we do have VLAN 9 and 10 and 11 uh, as I agreed before uh, each of them represent uh, one uh, VRF for uh, one in for internet one for borderless security and one for uh, fast DNA <laughs> Then we go for the ASA. Uh, let's see interfaces first. <clears throat> so this is the interface where is the failover happening. Uh, this interface is the public IP address. This interface is for the uh, MPLS uh, going to uh, ISP1 <coughs> and ISP2, sorry. Uh, then over here, you will have the in internal interfaces with the cohort switches, which represent each for one VR. So this is the setting for uh, the IP addresses. So name F to show you all the interface uh, name, which is this is internet outside. This is files DNA outside. This is borderless security outside. And then we do have files DNA inside and borderless security inside accordingly so you can see all these interfaces are uh, how it's configured let's check the bgp and you can see over here uh, he's getting the default route coming from uh, 4043 which is basically coming from 24 and then uh, all the other uh, ranges uh, that uh, he's getting from the <coughs> BGP and you can see over here this is uh, for example 272727 27, which is the loopback interface for uh, R27 represents the NTP on the DNS server so uh, he's getting all these information coming from BGP if we see the normal routing table then it has uh, much more um, ranges 
and basically because of the internal ranges as well which is coming from the OSPF as you see for example here this is 172.16.00 which representing the borderless security range in the data center then we have the 192 which is the, this one and that's represent the 10 and 20 and that's represent the uh, bias DNA ranges so this is one and this is uh, another one and as you see each of them he has uh, two paths because basically the firewalls connected to two different uh, uh, core switches so there is a redundancy for that uh, this is basically uh, the configuration for the uh, as a firewall <coughs> then let's go for the core switches over here and as uh, you remember we have uh, three VRFs and uh, we have the border security and again same setting that we are applying uh, this is the VLAN 100 and VLAN 200 and VLAN uh, 100 and VLAN 200 is basically the, the for each um, uh, VRF so VLAN 100 borderless security VLAN 200 is borderless security then we have VLAN 10 which is for files DNA VLAN 20 for files DNA uh, we set up VLAN 100 and we are using VLAN 100 here but we we don't have any uh, machine right now in VLAN 200 okay then if we go a little bit down over here, then you can see the uh, interfaces that's fine. And then we have the VRF and OSPF1, which is for the VRF of uh, files DNA. So these are the subnet that we are including in the uh, OSPF. And then we redistribute it again uh, on the ASA so he know about these things from the OSPF. And then on BGP, then he can send it back uh, to the upstream where is uh, the VRF of that on, on the MPLS and then it goes to uh, the relevant uh, network so for example uh, this is uh, files DNA uh, which is mean we can uh, ping now from here to here uh, as uh, verification so what will be the IP address of this? So basically, it's uh, this is the explanation 192.168.10 and then dot 100. Uh, so let's double check the configuration of this here. Okay, let's check the Docker file. So here we can log in and we go to applications, system tools, and then the main terminal. If config, then this is will be 192.168.10.100. So as you see over here, it's a dot hundred and VLAN 10. And basically VLAN 10 is 192.168.10. So what we need to check if we can ping first uh, the Active Directory, so ping 192.168.20.10, so this is pinging OK. Now let's try to ping uh, something on the uh, Files DNA headquarters because these services are belong to uh, Files DNA VRF, so we should do, uh, we should be able to ping that. So 10.20.20. Uh, 60.100 and voila we are pinging them and then we can check the 50.100 as well which is okay pinging let's trace route it so 10.20.50.100 and basically uh, we are going to the core switch then we go to the Next step, which is let's go this way, uh, then it goes to 1040 10 3, which is the R4 24, then 1020 10 3, 
10, 20, 10, 3, which is 10, 20, 10, 3, which is this one, uh, this uh, R5, because here we have the 10, 20, uh, is that? Uh, 10. Yeah, I think this is a little mistake over here. So this is 10, not 11. So this is the VLAN 10, which is over here, the MPLS. So if we go back, 10, uh, 40, 10 dot 3. And then we go to, uh, sorry, 1040, which is this one we said, yes. And then we go to this one, which is 10, 20, 10, 3, which is this one. So 10, 20, 10, dot 3, which is this IP address. Then 10, 20, 20, 20, 20 23, which is basically the, uh, the uh, IP address of the internal uh, inside, which is 10, 20, 23, as you see it over here. And then it will reach to the uh, gateway, and then it will go to the uh, 50, which is uh, the Docker file over here. So this is the trace route, which is uh, working great. Uh, let's do the same thing, but for VLAN 60, and you will see it's going to almost the same, same direction. Uh, and then we will reach the dot, uh, 60.100, which is uh, this one. Uh, also, I want to show you how you configure the Docker file uh, from uh, the startup configuration. So this is Docker 61. Let's go for startup config. And we go to Docker 61, Docker 61, uh, which is this one. And then as you see, I opened the configuration to be loaded automatically and this is the uh, configuration that you can put in every docker and save it in order when you run it back again it will take the configuration automatically so ip address add and then this is the ip address that we have slash 24 device it uh, a zero true which is uh, the, the logic uh, attribute for that and then you you can give the ip address of the gateway so this is the way that we do for um, the Docker. Uh, we can do the same thing for the PCs as well. And you, you can give it in this way. And you just save so the PC will always have uh, the configuration automatically when you stop and run it back again. Uh, then we do have the same thing here for the Docker uh, in VLAN 100, which is this one for borderless security. And I believe we have the uh, borderless security headquarters. So headquarters need to connect to the data center service. So dot 100. So let's check this one. So let's say show IP just to be sure that we have the IP address. Then OK. Then we do ping. And we need to ping this one, which is VLAN 100, 172.16.100.100. So the 100 is the VLAN, and the 100 is the IP address. We should be able to ping that one. Uh, it's not pinging. Let's see. OK, so it's not pinging. Let's see if we have an IP address over here. config and then we go to uh, 172.16.0.100. Ah, okay, so it's a VLAN 100, but it's uh, 0, not 100. So my bad. Sorry for that. Then we go to 0 over here. And okay, it's pinging and it's, so it's reachable. So that we have, uh, let's double check. 172.16.0.100. And we can see, <clears throat> let's trace route. So he's going to the uh, core switch. 
then he go to the IP address of, of the of the R9 and then he go to the MPLS and then uh, he's he's reaching uh, this side and then he's reaching this side and then he go inside the uh, firewall which is you see BS equal VLAN 200 uh, and uh, 100 and then he's he's reaching to the uh, final destination so this is the uh, path that he's using so it's going like this good uh, so th basically this is all the information about um, DC1 and um, in the next video we can see uh, DC2. Thank you.